These tragic murders took four young, vibrant lives from our community. Nothing we do can bring them back. The only thing that we can do in law enforcement to honor their memories that we know of is to bring this to a successful conclusion. Nearly seven weeks after the murder of four University of Idaho students, police have arrested a suspect. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremton News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. This was a story that drew national and international attention. Now police are one step closer to solving this case. Pennsylvania State Police have arrested 28-year-old Ryan Koberger, who was being held now for extradition back to Idaho in a criminal homicide investigation. The Moscow Police Department and Lataw County Prosecutor's Office issued an active arrest warrant on charges of first degree murder. He is also charged with felony burglary in Idaho. We know he was arrested across the country in Monroe County, Pennsylvania. That happened overnight. It has been just over six weeks since the murders in that off campus home in the dead of night. The students were found in their home on King Road, just steps away from the University of Idaho campus. They were found on Sunday, November 13th. So for six weeks, police have been very tight lipped about the details surrounding their deaths and the investigation. We now know the victims were found stabbed in their beds. Autopsies showed all four were likely asleep during the attack, although some of the victims did have defensive wounds, indicating at least some of them may have woken up and tried to fight back. From that very first day, this crime rocked the entire Moscow community and beyond. We bring you team coverage tonight. Our Janelle Finch has been reading up on what we know about the suspect. Nathan Hyun is in Coeur d'Alene tonight, where a memorial service was held for two of the victims, Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan. First, though, we want to begin with Shan Shannon Mowdy, who traveled to Moscow today for that press conference with police. She is joining us live with more on what local law enforcement had to say about today's arrest. Shannon. Not a lot of information coming out in that afternoon press conference today, and we have learned that a lot of what is being held back is because of Idaho law and the fact that suspect Brian Koberger is still in custody in Pennsylvania tonight. I can tell you um, for a lot of law enforcement, it was a fairly sleepless a um, couple of days with um, as we were leading up to everything that we were doing. But um, what I can tell you is um, I have faith in those agencies across the nation. Um, I have faith in our officers. I have faith in the FBI. A day of mixed emotions in Moscow. It's sad to be here, but happy to be here at the same time. As law enforcement confirmed the arrest of the man suspected of killing four University of Idaho students on November 13th. A criminal complaint was filed yesterday here in Lataw County, charging the defendant, Mr. Kohlberger, with four counts of first degree murder, in addition to felony burglary, which involves entering the residence with the intent to commit the crime of murder. Under Idaho law, the details of what led police to Brian Kohlberger are sealed in a probable cause affidavit, which won't be released until he's served an arrest warrant in Lataw County. In Pullman, police searched a Washington State University student apartment connected to Koberger. So we are still looking for um, all pieces of evidence, um, but we are still looking for the, the weapon. Um, and I will say that uh, we have found an Elatra. Though Moscow Police Chief James Fry wouldn't comment on Koberger's connection to the Hyundai Elantra, the four victims, or what led to his becoming a suspect. That information is in the sealed court documents. Koberger's extradition hearing is set for January 3rd. Moscow police tell Krem 2 that process could take weeks or months. Chief Fry says this isn't the end of the investigation. They now want tips related to Koberger. I would say anything and everything, um, as we've said all along, um, we, we know what tips we're looking for. We will take those tips. As the mystery in Moscow enters a new beginning. While we cannot bring back Maddie, Kaylee, Zana, and Ethan, we can thoughtfully and purposefully carry their legacy forward in the work that we do. We have also learned that the cleanup operation that started at the King Road home Friday morning has been put on hold. Chief Fry says that was at the request of the courts. In Moscow, Shannon Mowdy, Krem 2 News. Shannon, thank you very much. Meantime, a suspect named and arrested in this investigation. Of course, a major break in this case. Brian Koberger now charged for the four murders near the University of Idaho campus last month. Krem 2's Janelle Finch is joining us now in the newsroom with what we know about this suspect. Janelle? 
Officials say the person responsible for the deaths of four University of Idaho students may be Brian Koberger. Since Brian Koberger's arrest this morning, we've learned he lived and went to school just a short drive from the crime scene. Moscow Police Chief James Fry confirmed Koberger is a graduate student at Washington State University and a Pullman resident. This afternoon, WSU shared a statement following Koberger's arrest. A quote from WSU Chancellor Elizabeth Chilton reads in part, This horrific act has shaken everyone in the Palouse region. We will long feel the loss of these young people in the Moscow Pullman community and hope the announcement today will be a step toward healing. Krem 2 located Koberger's apartment building in Pullman. Today, crime tape was up around the complex and police were speaking to neighbors. We spoke to one of the people living here. He says it's disturbing to think he could have been living near someone capable of committing these crimes. I'm just kind of dumbfounded, you know, that I this could be going on right here, you know, or like, you know, somebody could be conspiring for you know, to do something like that right here. WSU officials say Koberger completed one semester of the criminal justice program as a Ph.D. student. Koberger previously attended a private university out of Center Valley, Pennsylvania, where he received a master's degree in criminal justice. He is originally from Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, roughly a 40-minute drive from where he was arrested today. An Idaho appearance from the suspect may not happen for some time, as officials work through the technicalities of an out-of-state arrest. In the meantime, Moscow police are continuing to ask for tips and for patience as they move forward in this new beginning of the investigation. In the newsroom, Janelle Finch, Krem 2 News. Janelle, thank you very much. We are also learning tonight more from locals in Monroe County in Pennsylvania who knew the suspect. Jack Culkin with our sister station in Scranton, Pennsylvania, reports tonight what neighbors there have to say. We are just a few miles away from the main entrance to the Indian Mountain Lake Estates, a private community where earlier Friday morning Brian Koberger was arrested, accused of killing four students from the University of Idaho. Koberger grew up right here in the Poconos, but most recently he had lived in Washington State, where he was studying for his doctorate. As for the community where Koberger was arrested, neighbors we spoke with say the people in and surrounding Indian Mountain Lake Estates are friendly and that they were shocked to know that an alleged killer was living in their neighborhood. I'm surprised that out in Idaho for the guy to end up here with the, with the car. Uh, the car. Wow, that's right around the block from me. But yeah, it's usually really peaceful up here. Um, even like this busy road is, is pretty peaceful all the time. I love Pennsylvania. So, but seeing something like this, I mean, you just never know, you know. Uh, Indian Mountain Lakes is, a, I think they have like 60 miles of roads in there or something like that. So it's a huge community. So anybody could be anywhere, man. From Monroe County, Pennsylvania, I'm Jack Colkin. So the arrest comes as a memorial service was being held today for two of those victims, Kaylee Gonsalves of Rathrum and Madison Mogan from Coeur d'Alene. Friends and family gathered at Lake City Church in Coeur d'Alene today to remember the lives of those two young women. Graham 2's Nathan Hyun joining us live outside the church tonight with reaction from loved ones. Nathan? Yeah, guys, the memorial service here at Lake City Church in Coeur d'Alene just wrapped up about half an hour ago. And when it first began, I had the chance to go inside for a moment. They're giving out these programs with a picture of the girls and a Bible verse on the back. And inside, there are a lot of people crying and hugging one another. There are over 200 people inside celebrating the lives of Madison Bogan and Kaylee Gonzalez. Family and friends shared emotional stories about the two college students through tears, and the memorial ended with people coming out and hugging and crying and really ch telling people that, you know, life is really precious. And I also had a chance to speak with Madison's godmother, who told me that she's not thinking about the suspect who got arrested today. She just wants to focus on the girls and their memories. For right now, live in Coeur d'Alene, Nathan Hun, Krem 2 News. Nathan, thank you. And we also heard from Ethan Chapin's family, the only male victim in that quadruple murder. In a statement, they said, we are relieved this chapter is over because it provides a form of closure. However, it doesn't alter the outcome or alleviate the pain. We miss Ethan and our family is forever changed. Over the last seven weeks, they said, we stood by the Moscow Police Department, FBI and Idaho State Police, confident they would solve this crime. So when we received the phone call last night, we 
congratulated them for their diligent work and service. They continued, quote, We remain grateful to the University of Idaho and the Sigma Chi fraternity for their outgoing of support. We also appreciate the outpouring of kind words from so many others, which we'll need as we enter the next chapter of this nightmare. Today we marvel at the continued stories about Ethan and the lives he touched in his short 20 years. If we all lived and loved as Ethan did, the world would be a much better place. We also heard from Ethan's family in the very first week after the murders. At the time, they said they simply wanted the world to know they were remembering Ethan as an outstanding young man and the light of their life. He's the kind of kid that everybody wanted to be around. You yeah. know, he just, he was just a good kid. He's a good kid. That kind to all. Didn't deserve what happened. No. Ethan had a twin brother and a sister who were all attending the University of Idaho. His parents had just visited all three of them the week before the murders happened for Parents Weekend. They said they are grateful for those last few days. And as we pulled out of Moscow, we literally were like, we've done it. We, we've literally done it as parents. We've created three incredible humans that will go on and have something great to offer to this um, world. So we will not let this sink us or sink our kids, because if anything, they have to go on and shine Ethan's bright light on their own. Mm -hmm. Reaction is already pouring in from across the region. Idaho Governor Brad Little calling the arrest today extremely welcome news, saying, quote, it is an important step in bringing peace to a community, state, and nation gripped by this hor horrifying tragedy. This, come, this crime, rather, has consumed so many hearts and minds for weeks, and we are thankful for the unrelenting hard work of the Moscow Police Department, Idaho State Police, the FBI, and other law enforcement partners that helped in the investigation. This continues to be a developing story, and we will update you with the latest information on the suspect just as soon as we get it. We'll have more in all of our programs this evening coming up at 6 o'clock. We'll hear from a WSU professor and get his thoughts that a student from his area is, according to police, responsible for the killings of the four students. And remember, for all of our ongoing reporting on this case, you can just text the word Idaho to 509-448-2000. We'll take a quick break and be right back.